the Sony A7S III is finally here with 4K up to 100 frames per second, 10 bit 4 to 2 all intra internal recording, crazy low light capabilities, well controlled thermal, autofocus in all shooting modes, IBIS, and more. Hi guys, I'm Johnny from Cinema 5D, and today on my table is the Sony A7S III. It took Sony five years to develop this camera. Uh, I'm five years older, but of course this video is not about my age, it's, ab it's about the capabilities of the new camera. And what we're gonna see today is first of all a mini documentary, and at the end, low light capabilities, another short video that we produced. Now talking about the mini documentary, uh, taking into account some of the comments that I got on my previous video the, about the EOS R6, I want people to know that there is no real documentary, meaning we are not trying to push any agenda here or to promote any documentary. Those mini documentaries, the, the ones that we make, are all for the purpose of reviewing the camera. I'm a documentary filmmaker, I want to see how the camera works for me in the field, and that's the only reason why we produce those mini documentaries. And the next thing is about the review itself. We are uh, doing those reviews with pre-production models. That's the type of camera we are getting. And this is fine with the manufacturer when we are publishing those videos, as long as it's written in a very clear way that we shot it with a pre-production model. What we don't do, we don't uh, conduct our lab test because it makes zero sense to conduct lab tests with a pre-production model. So I hope this is clear. And now we can finally move on and watch Kana. When I'm in the mountains, it's blank. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just enjoying that moment. It's just me and the mountains and uh, nothing else. I wake up and uh, I usually have breakfast. It's either muesli or avocado toast. It has to be avocado toast. That's pretty much the only kind of toast that I have in the morning. And a bit of lemon juice, I like that. And I usually uh, put some makeup on. Uh, of course, I get dressed. get all the gears ready and off I go. I was never interested in running. I, I thought it was boring. But then one day, um, a good friend of mine, she asked me, do you want to come to the mountains to do this trail run? And I thought, okay, mountains, that sounds pretty fun. So I went and I was never a runner. I thought that was probably one of the hardest things I did in my life. But somehow I really got into that, like the kind of pain and kind of achievement that I felt when I got to the top. So since then I've been addicted. I think we're gonna have to take four trains, so you need to be ready for a long train ride. From the start to the first six kilometers, I think, it's a lot of uphills. We're starting at 400 and go up, 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 and then we come down. <laughs> we get to Musashi Kosugi Station, and then we have to get on a bus. <laughs> and the bus ride is uh, another 30 minutes, so the whole trip is going to take two and a half hours, almost. So that's a long way to go, but uh, it's worth it. So after we get off the bus, it's gonna be right in front of the shrine, uh, right by the water stream, River. It's a very small, small, tiny shrine, but very pretty. I chose Mount Mitake because it's an area I really like, partially because 
that's where my grandparents lived. And also this area is especially beautiful on a rainy day. It's going to be 12 kilometers overall. The total elevation gain, I think it's going to be 800 meters. So it's quite a bit of uphills. So you have to be ready. You have to follow me too. The difference between road running and mountain running, it's completely different. First of all, I think you use all different muscles. You use your arms, thighs, uh, legs, and you jump up and down. Um, there's more movement. So we go from here for 20 minutes and then make a right here and go into uh, Mitake-san, the village, mountain village. 1.5. That's what we did so far? 1.5? 1.5. How much more we have to go? We have 12.5k more. You think we can do it? Yes, I think we can do it. Let's go. <laughs> but also, what I really like about is you have to be so careful not to trip over something or roots or rocks. Sometimes you hear some sort of animals moving and I get scared sometimes. <laughs> and that concentration that you get is great. Okay, we made it. Whenever I say, I tell people um, I like to run in the mountains, I'm a trail runner. People think I'm running the whole time, but it's actually, it's not true. The clouds are clearing up, lots of mountains. There's a town there. There's a town where? Do you see? Mm. There's a, there's a... We might have a bit of chat, yeah. a bit of stretching, take some photos. it rains, the, the forest turns into this, this magical, misty place. Um, I've taken some photos and everyone goes like, wow, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really, really beautiful. Uh, down hills, I, I really, really love running down the hills. It's, it's, it's such a liberating, amazing feeling. When I'm running in the mountains, especially when I'm alone, somehow I feel really connected with the whole thing. It's such a blissful feeling. Um, and I think in, if you live in Tokyo, I mean, you have a really busy life, right? Every day you have so many things to do. And sometimes I think, is this a reality or this Tokyo life? I mean, I guess both are, but uh, I guess there's a craving for that kind of stillness, the calm, that. Uh, I feel in the mountains. So first of all, thank you, Kana. It was really a pleasure uh, spending the day together. Uh, 
it's literally running after you as you could see i still have a long way to do until i will catch up and be as fit as you but this is something for the future maybe you know when the a7s4 will come we can do another video and see if i improved my uh, physical condition i also want to thank uh, thank uh, luciano Lu luciano is our in-house editor i think he, he did a really great job here good so um just few lines um, about the camera itself it performed remarkably well um, you know there was no big issues the only thing was maybe autofocus and i do work quite a lot in autofocus mode especially because i want to check how well the autofocus uh, is doing um, there was some issue uh, when moving from close subject to far that didn't uh, work quite well but again this is a pre-production model and the information was uh, passed to sony and i hope that they can improve it a little bit and yeah other than that uh, i'm running with a camera and held i mean i don't have any grip i don't have any um, cage on it it's simply the camera and the lens and i think it was very very comfortable to hold the whole day all in all um yeah other than that the ibis is working well maybe not as well as we see with canon but i think it's doing really a great job if it's a static shot uh, I, I think you saw many of those also in the video perfect it's really like uh, using um uh, like like working from a tripod yeah it's very very nice but if you do a lot of um walking i think it's good enough i like this kind of balance between uh, the shot not being too clean uh, that's why i'm not working with gimbals unless it's something which is not documentary yeah? but for do, uh, for documentary uh, uh, work i always try to have the camera with me and i like this balance between a bit of shakiness but still uh, smooth um, smooth video and now let's move on and watch the video we made about the low light capabilities of the new camera let me change to something more appropriate something that you can actually see me one second please where is this okay this is the highest 409,600. we have color we have autofocus it's simply amazing the sony a7s3 is like a night vision device yeah so i ran between 2 a.m to 5 a.m in my higashi kurume uh, neighborhood here in tokyo I was very curious to see what I can see at night. Um, yeah, I was using two lenses. One is the Sony E-mount 24mm 1.4. I use it in few shots. And the other one is the 16 to 35mm uh, 2.8. Uh, so the, the, the visuals you're gonna see uh, were taken mostly with this lens. Yeah, of course, if I would have continued to use the 24mm 1.4, uh, I, would, I would have a greater uh, flexibility with the low light and better uh, performance but I actually wanted to use the 2.8 and see uh, what I can come up with. Please pay attention to the value uh, 16,000. Something is happening in the camera which makes the whole picture a bit smoother, quite interesting. And yeah, so I leave you with the footage. I hope you will enjoy, enjoy. there's nothing really earth shattering but it's more about just to see the low light capabilities of this camera. And I, Please don't forget, the camera itself is, of course, it's a pre-production model, so things can hopefully get even better. Thank you, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and let's see the footage. Thank you.
Guys, thanks for watching and don't forget, your best friend when it comes to higher ISO value is the value 16,000. Okay, last video, a very short one, highlighting the uh, new features of the camera in no particular order and right after my final conclusion. The A7S III is fanless and Sony took the extra care when designing how the camera body treats the heat. The result is no limitation in recording time in 4K 24, 25 and 30p and according to Sony, more than an hour of continuous recording in 4K 60p and around 30 minutes in 4K 120p. The newly developed Beyond XR fast processor together with the 12 megapixel sensor are responsible for a much improved rolling shutter effect. The low light capability of the camera is insane. When using those high ISO values, I find 16,000 to be the clearest. There is a new intuitive menu which can also be operated by touching the LCD screen. Sony is the first to use CF Express A-Type cards. This new card is smaller in size than the SD, but faster. Use it when you want to film in 4K 120 frames per second. You can use any of the dual card slots with any of the cards for relay recording or backup. Finally, a large HDMI connector capable of outputting 16-bit uncompressed raw signal. Large comfortable grip. Seven new creative looks for out-of-the-box robust image. Newly designed internal body image stabilization system. Mind you that when using active mode, the image will crop a bit. Autofocus speed can be controlled for more natural looking changes. There are five recording file formats to choose from. Three are new. The XABC HS is a long op H265 format, but for the highest possible picture quality, use the new H264 XABC SI 4K file format, which can be used for recording all the way up to 120 frames per second. The maximum bitrate when filming in XAVC SI at 4K 24, 10 bit 4 to 2 all intra is 240 megabit per second, and in 60p, 600 megabit per second. The LCD screen is now completely articulated, and when connecting headphones, for example, it won't limit the LCD movement. When working in S Log 2 or 3, the minimum ISO setting is 640. You can dial it down all the way to 160 on the expense of dynamic range, but this might be useful if you don't have an ND filter on you and still need to film outdoor. 4K 120 frames per second is beautiful, but can be a tiny bit soft and the image is slightly cropped. And my favorite feature, the one that helps with my old tired eyes, is the red square focus box. Yes, instead of grey or white, this helps big time when focusing. Ok, conclusion. I have to admit and be completely open. When I first saw the camera, I was not that excited. Because Sony kept pumping us throughout the years with exceed expectations. I don't know how many times I heard this sentence. When the A7S III will come out, it will exceed expectations. And I guess that I translated it more into the resolution side or maybe even the internal raw recording. But Sony did something very clever here. They took it to a different direction. They took it to the direction of reliability, robustness and ease of use. And for that, I do salute them because they did really a very, very good job. I enjoyed very much working with the camera. I never felt that it's controlling me. I thought that uh, it just performs and delivers. So of course it can be that in the near future when the camera gets to um, other testers or even much better to users, we will find some flaws. Uh, time will tell about that. Uh, and of course, we you know, nobody makes a, a, a perfect product. 
but all in all, I think the direction uh, is completely uh, uh, smart. We will get the camera again, a, a production model, uh, very, very soon. And then we will, we will be able to test it in our lab and see the dynamic range and rolling shutter effect. And um, I think what they did all in all is literally, or you can consider this uh, camera as a full frame 4K video camera, all packed in a very compact uh, mirrorless body. If you want, you can also get this um, audio attachment that, uh, that uh, Sony has. This will allow you to record up to four channels of uh, audio in some combinations, yeah. So all in all, very good Sony. And what I'm not aware of in the time of recording the video is the price of the camera. And I really hope that it will be competitive. So um, yeah, so it can, it can do nice, nice in the market. Guys, thank you very much. And I'll see you again on the 3rd or 4th of August. I will present you with a modestly priced uh, anamorphic combination, something that maybe work for some of you quite nice. And until then, thank you very much for your support and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.